Welcome to Reagan and Friends, a podcast series hosted by the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. Each month, we will share some behind the scenes moments and stories of President Reagan with some of his more famous friends. Folks, I've got so much to say about my friend Ronald Reagan. He and Nancy Shirley and I were friends before he was governor. Our kids were in school together. And of course, there was the moment when he was in governor in Sacramento. Shirley and I and others joined hands in prayer and a prophecy came that he would dwell at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue before anybody was thinking about him running for president. Well, it turned out to be a true prophecy. He not only became president, but he became one of the best presidents we've ever had at a time when we needed his kind of calm, firm leadership. Charles Eugene Patrick Boone, known to the public as Pat Boone, was born in 1934. He is the great, 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 great grandson of Daniel Boone, the legendary Kentucky explorer and frontiersman, and is known for his white buck shoes, mild-mannered demeanor, and devotion to Christianity. Raised in Nashville, Tennessee, he sang in church and on local television and radio while growing up. In 1953, when they were both 19, Pat married Shirley Foley. They remained married for 65 years until her passing in 2019. Pat Boone made his recording debut in 1954 under Public Records, followed a year later by his Dot Records debut, Two Hearts, Two Kisses. In May of 1955, he notched his first number one hit with the rendition of Fats Domino's Ain't That a Shame. From 1956 to 1963, he accumulated nearly 54 chart appearances, many of them with two-sided hits. His most notable smashes included the number one records Love Letters in the Sand and April Love, both released in 1957. Oh, you Throughout his career, Pat Boone stayed true to his Christian values and commented that he would only star in moral, uplifting films. That same year, he began hosting his own ABC television series, The Pat Boone Chevy Showroom, which featured a who's who of top name guests, including Ella Fitzgerald, Nat King Cole, and Tony Bennett. Among his numerous awards and accolades, Boone has three stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and in 2003, he was inducted into the Gospel Music Hall of Fame. So how did Pat Boone and Ronald Reagan meet? It was actually through their children. The Boone's children and the Reagan's children both attended John Thomas Dye School in Bel Air, California, a kindergarten through eighth grade private school. In a 2004 Newsmax interview, Pat recalled, When my wife and I were in our 20s, we'd all go to the school functions, and there'd be an actor friend, Ron and Nancy Reagan, with their two kids, who were the same ages as our younger two daughters. They had to be in their mid-40s at the time, he added. Pat remembered that he and his wife would often stand around after the school functions and visit with the Reagans, drinking cinnamon tea in front of a big roaring fireplace in the main building, discussing politics. He continued in the interview, I remember after the school sessions driving home on many occasions and telling Shirley, boy, it's a shame that guy Ron Reagan doesn't run for office. I like what he says. I like the way he says it. I remember saying he should run for Congress. The two also attended the same anti-communist rallies in the 1950s and 1960s. When Ronald Reagan did decide to run for California governor, Pat says he was in his corner right from the start, often introducing him and or singing for him at functions. You've either got or you haven't got charm. Ron and Charm sort of go arm in arm. When Ronald Reagan became president of the United States, the two couples, Ronald and Nancy Reagan, and Pat and Shirley Boone, remained friends. The president mentioned his friend in his personal diary twice in 1982, once on September 14th and once on October 20th. On September 14th, he wrote, went to an East Room reception for donors to the Washington Charity Dinner, Pat Boone, Ephraim Zimbalist Jr., and several other old friends. The whole idea started about three years ago in our living room through a conversation with Pat and a few others. In February of 1984, Pat Boone shows up in President Reagan's diary again, this time for attending an event at the White House with the President and the 1984 Easter Seal child. In April of 1987, Pat Boone once more appears in President Reagan's diary, again for attending an Easter Seal event. In the archives of the Reagan Library, we have this book of Easter Seal stamps, which is framed alongside a black and white photograph of Pat Boone with the child. In addition to attending Easter Seal events and charity dinners, Pat Boone also entertained at White House events. In 1984, Pat Boone sang at the National Religious Broadcasters Convention. Romans 13 tells us that there is no authority except that ordained by God. God has blessed America through you. And how wonderful that we have a president who means these words. Let's all stand and sing and thank God and ask him to continue to bless us. God bless America, land that I love. 
At the start of that same event, President Reagan shared this story. I'm going to depart from what I was going to say or begin with here for just a moment to tell a little story, and I hope Pat Boone won't mind. I'm going to tell it on him. <laughs> Some years ago, when there was a subversive element that had moved into the motion picture industry in Hollywood, and uh, there were great meetings that were held. There was one that was held in the Los Angeles Sports Arena. 16,000 people were there. And thousands of them up in the balconies were young people. And Pat Boone stood up, and in speaking to this crowd, he said, talking of communism, that he had daughters. They were little girls then. And he said, I love them more than anything on earth. But he said, I would rather, and I felt I know what he's going to say, and oh, you must not say that. And yet I had underestimated him. He said, I would rather that they die now believing in God than live to grow up under communism and die one day no longer believing in God. We came across a story from 1970 that was posted on the Christian Broadcasting Network's website that we think sums up Ronald Reagan and Pat Boone's relationship and beliefs perfectly. The article said, On a Sunday afternoon in October 1970, seven sharply different people came together in the foyer of a stately home in Sacramento. They were getting ready to say goodbye. Ronald Reagan was smiling and nodding as he turned his head toward Pat Boone, whose smile caused his entire face to glisten. Nancy Reagan watched the two of them momentarily, the barest trace of a smile on her lips, and then she whispered two or three words to Shirley Boone. Suddenly, everyone stopped. In the split second of stillness, they looked at one another. Then one of the men said, Governor, would you mind if we prayed a moment with you and Mrs. Reagan? We'd appreciate that. Reagan's face remained bright and pleasant, but eased ever so slightly toward seriousness. It was hard to tell who moved first, probably Boone, but in a sort of chain reaction, the seven took hold of each other's hands and made an uneven circle. For an instant, they were like little children, each looking first to the right and down at one set of hands, and then to the left and the other. Only Boone seemed thoroughly at ease, but long friendship had broken all barriers between him and all those there, including the Reagans, their hosts. He had a happy smile on his face. All seven closed their eyes, Reagan bowed his head sharply, and they prayed. Thank you for watching. Don't forget that when you subscribe to our YouTube channel, you'll be notified every time new videos and podcasts are added to our site, including our Reagan and Friends, Words to Live By, and Reagan Forum podcasts. And don't forget to follow at Ronald Reagan on Facebook and Twitter, as well as at Reagan Foundation on Instagram and YouTube.